Hi folks, and welcome to the Meaningful Money Podcast. This is Season 17, Episode 12. This is the podcast dedicated to helping you put your finances in order. My name is Pete Matthew, and I'm going to share with you everything you need to know and everything you need to do to secure your financial future. I'm here to help you make sense of money. Here we are once again. Great to have you with me. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, today's show marks the end really of 18 months, 18 months of podcast seasons and episodes dealing with the major financial life stages. So we've gone from millennial finances all the way through to retirement planning and everything in between. And in that time, over that uh, big chunk of content of the last 18 months, a whole lot of common themes have come through. And so what I want to do today is to try and tie everything together with some golden rules, the sort of major high-level themes that have come through and which apply at every stage. So we'll call them the golden rules because, you know, it it makes for a decent title. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to skip uh, reviews this week just uh, because we've got quite a lot to get through. But before any of it, remember, of course, this podcast continues to be brought to you with the help of my friends at Seven Investment Management. They've been helping me out here on Meaningful Money for ages since the spring of 2011 which is just amazing. So please do check out what they're up to. They're at 7im.co.uk. That's the number 7im.co.uk. Go check them out. And this podcast is brought to you by Meaningful Academy, which is the best place to learn about how to take control of your finances, whether you're just starting out, learning how to budget and stuff like that, or whether you're a serious wealth builder and you want to understand investment theory, risk, and all that stuff. Everything you need to know is at MeaningfulAcademy.com, but stay tuned until the end of this show because I'm going to be announcing a discount code just for podcast listeners for anybody who wants to join the Academy, okay? Also, before we get into the meet, quick shout out to my good friends at the Money to the Masses podcast, which I know many of you listen to as well. Uh, Damien and the guys recently hit the amazing milestone of a million downloads of the podcast. So congrats to Damien, Andy, Justin, Lauren, and the whole team. Uh, meaning um, money to the masses is a great resource and, and the success that they, they are getting is truly deserved. So well done, guys. Proud of you. Okay, uh, I was going to call this session, There's Nothing New Under the Sun, kind of to reflect the fact that no matter what stage we're at and no matter how long finance and the economy and stuff has been around, really, it doesn't change. But I thought, there's nothing new under the sun. It's a biblical reference from the book of Ecclesiastes, but I thought it'd be a little bit obscure and would do absolutely nothing for the YouTube algorithm. So instead, it's the golden rules of personal finance, right? And these are the things which are universal. No matter what life stage you're in, they apply. And so hopefully, they'll be helpful to you. Probably none of them will come as a surprise to anybody who listens to this show uh, at all regularly. So remember, notes and links from today's show, they are at the show notes, which is the page that supports this uh, podcast. It's the only link you need to remember if you're out and about. Meaningfulmoney.tv slash RP12. That's for retirement planning, which is the season that we've come to an end now. Uh, Meaningfulmoney.tv slash RP12. Okay, without further ado, let's dive into our golden rules of personal finance. Okay, number one, cash flow is everything. So this is the number one golden rule for a reason. At literally every stage of your life, cash flow management, money in and money out, is your number one tool to ensure financial success. Think about it. When you're getting started, you're trying to put together a starter emergency fund, say. You've got to spend less than you earn in order to put some money aside. Same when you're clearing debt. When you're building wealth, paying yourself first means prioritizing your cash flow towards your own purposes and not someone else's. So you're overpaying mortgages to reduce the amount of interest you have to pay, or you're maximizing pension and ISA contributions. Then in retirement, managing cash flow is a way to ensure that you'll always have the money you need. By not overspending in the early years of retirement, you give yourself options in later life over things like long-term care, maybe making significant gifts to the family, stuff like that. A positive cash flow simply means spending less than you earn. And as I've said before, there are two sides to that statement. Either you can spend less or you can earn more or both. So spending less is about planning your expenditure rather than just letting it happen to you. Yes, it means setting and sticking to a budget, especially in the early days of getting a handle on your finances. It means choosing whether to defer perhaps an impulse purchase in favor of maybe a better financial decision. 
means possibly saying no to pressure from friends to go away for a big weekend if doing so would be detrimental to your finances. Earning more is about negotiating a pay rise, maybe. Not easy in the current climate, I'm sure. It's about pursuing promotion. Maybe starting a side hustle to earn some money in the evenings and weekends. Maybe even starting your own full-time business so you're in control of your own future that way. And it's about owning assets, which can provide positive cash flow, maybe a rental property. Cash flow, money in and money out, and managing it is absolutely everything. Your entire financial security is built on good cash flow management, so take it seriously. Golden rule number two, your income is your biggest asset. Right, it's more a timeless truth than a rule list, essentially. Um, but it's especially true, I think, in the wealth building years. It also applies in retirement, even though that life stage is more about enjoying money than, than building wealth. But simple maths confirms that your income is your biggest asset. If you are, say, 40 years old, multiply your annual earnings by the number of years you expect to work. It's going to be a big number, probably a bigger number than the value of your house, say, which we tend to say is our biggest asset. Now, obviously, as we grow older, that number of years multiplier has got less impact. But by the time we're in our 50s, we're thinking about the income that we'll have in retirement anyway, rather than the income that we've got now. And of course, then at retirement, the difference between secured income sources like DB pensions, state pensions, rental income, annuities, and then unsecured income, drawing down off capital, you know, drawdown plans, ISAs, all that sort of stuff. These are the things that a successful retirement is made of. When we're working to build wealth, it's really important, crucial even, to protect the income that we are earning. Uh, you know, we're earning that income with our time, which is our salary, if you like, our earnings from work. Protecting that comes in a few different forms, but the ideal is a combination. So firstly, having an emergency fund of some kind, that's a pot of cash that is accessible if you need it. You know, easily the most common message that I've had on email and in DMs and stuff since the pandemic hit is how glad people have been to have cash behind them when facing furlough and a 20% income drop or maybe even now redundancy. They're using words in emails to me like relieved, peace, thankful to describe their emotions just from having a few months of expenses in a bank account. It's not rocket science, but its impact is massive. So that's the first thing you can do to protect your income, having some cash behind you. Next, we're back to cash flow. You can protect your income by being able, at a pinch, to be able to make it last longer, make your um, uh, emergency fund last longer by radically cutting expenses. And then we can look to insure our income in case something happens and we can't work for a long period of time, like you know we're ill or we have an accident or something. So you need to understand what benefits are available from your employer. Consider income protection insurance, which then should take into account how long your sick benefits will be paid from work, how long your emergency fund would last. So your income is your biggest asset. Don't take it for granted. Use these practical steps to protect it and make it last as long as possible. Third golden rule, risk is multifaceted and it must be understood. Risk, eh? Risk. Just four little letters, but an absolutely massive factor in our financial security at any life stage. As a 20-odd year veteran financial advisor, my biggest challenge by far is to help my clients understand risk in a way which is meaningful and applicable to their circumstances. Part of the issue with risk is that it's got so many sides to it, so many facets. It is a complex animal. In its simplest form, I suppose, when we talk about money particularly, risk is the chance of losing money, usually due to investments going south. But just a bigger, as big a risk is running out of money in retirement because of bad cash flow management or bad investment discipline. Inflation is a huge risk factor, particularly in retirement. And then you've got systemic risks like, you know, the economy is fund fundamentally broken or that some part of it might break and impact what we currently know about how investing works. There's the risk that you might do something daft and impact your wealth negatively simply out of naivety or ignorance or because you haven't set things up in such a way as to help yourself make good decisions. One of the most oft-repeated phrases I hear from people who hire me as their financial planner, and usually these are very bright people, they've skillfully managed their finances for years, one of the things they say to me most often is, they don't know what they don't know. So they hire me to take a look at everything, sense check it, and maybe spot things that they might have missed. 
So risk is a big deal and understanding it really is a lifetime's work for intentional wealth builders. It is sneaky and it will change form as you go through life and build wealth at different stages. It's one of the areas, understanding risk is one of the areas of wealth building where you can never really go on autopilot. We've got to keep learning about it and maintain constant vigilance. Watch out for more on risk in the coming weeks. It's a big hairy subject that we need to go deep on before too long. Golden rule number four, opportunity is everywhere. So I know that for so many people, uh, circumstances are, uh, um, sort of external circumstances, shall we say, are a massive factor in determining where they are right now. I, for example, have never experienced the institutional prejudice that people of color live with every day of their lives. I've never experienced any form of abuse from any person or institution. I wasn't born with a disability or a genetic predisposition towards debilitating depression, say. All of those things are very real, of course, and those living within those circumstances will have had different obstacles to overcome and will experience greater headwinds than I might as a healthy white middle-class bloke, right? When they are pursuing a career or their wealth building goals. I believe that obviously, while we are a long way from anything like a classless and truly equal society, there are more opportunities than ever for people to change their lives for the better, irrespective of circumstances. There is more information freely available thanks to the internet, right? Let's not forget that really the usable internet is only 25 years old. My kids' generation, they're 20 and 17, they are the first really to grow up as digital natives, never having known anything other than the ubiquitous presence of the internet. The world of work is quite likely to be going through its biggest transition since the Industrial Revolution, thanks to the COVID pandemic. You know, we're going to be changing how we work. And, and as with every transition, there's going to be a lot of uncertainty around uh, as we go through that. But there's also more opportunity to earn money than ever before if you're prepared to look for it and, yes, probably sacrifice a bit to earn it. I believe there are fewer excuses for accepting our status quo than there's ever been. One thing I have no time for is either older people slagging off the youngsters for being feckless and having it too easy or whatever. And neither do I have any time for the youngsters who look at the older folks and say, well, yeah, you know, you've had soaring house prices and all that sort of stuff. Each generation clearly has its own benefits, advantages and challenges to face. But where we have the ambition to change our circumstances for the better, there is the opportunity to do so, and now I believe more than ever, though it might require a significant investment of time, effort, and even money. So opportunities are everywhere. We just got to see them and go after them. Government rule number five, don't throw money away. Obvious, really. But no matter what stage of life you're living through, there's going to be plenty of people and companies just itching to part you from your money. Now, I don't talk much here on Meaningful Money about things like couponing or hunting around for the best deals on insurance or utilities. That's all important, of course, but I'll leave it to Martin Lewis and the super shoppers. It doesn't interest me particularly. But as we've gone through all these sessions over the past 18 months, I've said repeatedly that we can throw away a huge amount of money in two main ways, costs and taxes. So costs, particularly when we're investing, they're just everywhere. So you might have a fund charge, then a platform charge, and possibly an advice charge if you're paying an advisor on top of that. All those costs added together could well be north of 2% of your money invested each year. So just as an example, let's say you've got £10,000 invested. Well, if you pay 2% in fees and get a 7% return on your money, that's a net return after fees of 5%. Well, on your 10 grand over 10 years, you'll make £6,288 on your money. But if you can shave three quarters of the value off your fees, so take it down to 0.5% per year, then you'll make £8,771 over 10 years, basically an extra two and a half grand just saving some fees. You're not actually doing anything else. You're just not paying the fees out. And it's such an obvious win. It should be foremost on our minds at all points. 
Tax, obviously, is another danger. Most of us will only ever be in a position to save into pensions and ISAs. Those are pretty tax-efficient, mass-market vehicles. But tax danger is always lurking if we're not careful. Uh, not careful. So if we have large amounts outside of pensions and ISAs, we should be considering things like gain and loss harvesting in general investment accounts. Maybe division of assets between partners for tax efficiency. Be careful there, though. Gifting strategies, all these kinds of things can make your individual tax situation better. Unfortunately, the UK tax system is complicated, one of the most complex in the world, which is one of the reasons I have a job. Um, but most ordinary folks won't really ever get anywhere near the deeper end of the pool when it comes to tax planning. Just make sure you're maximizing your pension and your ISA subscriptions. You'll mostly be fine. But don't throw money away on unnecessary taxation and particularly on charges when it comes to your wealth building. No matter what time you're at, you know, if you're in retirement and you're paying too much fees for your uh, investment approach, that will shorten the length of time your money will last quite considerably when you apply the, the factor of compounding. So every penny you spend in charges is a penny, penny that you can't spend yourself. Crucial point. Definitely worthy of a place in our list of golden rules here. Number six, behavior is the biggest factor, though, in your success or otherwise when it comes to your financial health. Long-term listeners and viewers will know how obsessed I've become with learning more about the field of behavioral finance. Put very simply, this is the study of how we make financial decisions and then seeking to find ways to optimize those decisions. So it's dead easy for me to stand here and say, well, you should do this or that, and when markets fall, you should hold your nerve. But of course, we're all real people, humans with feelings, and we've got an infinite variety of influences on the way we feel about and act around money. So when you've earned the money in your ISA, which is currently declining in value because the stock market is falling, it's pretty difficult to be detached about it, impossible to be fully detached. But yet we are not slaves to our impulses, or we don't have to be. Some might say that this is what elevates us from the other animals, okay? We can choose to master ourselves to a greater or lesser extent, though never completely. And so we must learn about behavior, uh, seek to put in place frameworks where possible to optimize that behavior. And I think that optimizing our behavior can be summed up really in just one short phrase. And as I come to this, our number seven golden rule, it won't uh, surprise anyone who's listened to this show for any length of time. What might our golden rule number seven be? Say it with me, be intentional. I'm seriously thinking about getting this tattooed on my arm. I probably won't, though. I'll still be saying that in 10 years' time. Intentional is the word that has come to summarize pretty much everything that I preach here on Meaningful Money. Being intentional means living on purpose, making choices about your life and your money and your job and your relationships, all that sort of stuff, making choices and then executing on them. Being intentional means not living by default, where things just kind of happen to you and you kind of roll along with them. And at worst, you blame those external circumstances for the state that you find yourself in. Being intentional remain, uh, means redeeming every second of every day to bend it to your will. I don't mean overworking. Learned some lessons about that myself recently, but making sure that where possible, we grab every opportunity to better ourselves. Being intentional chimes with the stoic philosophy of becoming the best versions of ourselves. That's our ultimate aim, whether that's financially or in any other way. A pursuit of excellence, if you like. Sounds like hard work, doesn't it? Well, sometimes it will be hard work, others not. But one thing is sure that the work, the being intentional is constant. Surely one of the worst things in life must be regret. You know, wishing you'd done something, lived a certain way, loved a certain way, been true to yourself, but it being too late really to do anything about it. That can't be, it, really there can't be many things worse than that. Regret, of course, is backward looking. Being intentional is forward looking. It's making sure that you don't regret in the future. So even if you're in your 50s listening to this now and you're thinking, man, I wish I'd woken up to the importance of good financial management 20, 30 years ago, don't fret. It's better than waking up you know, in your 60s or later. If you are in your 60s and you want to make some financial changes, just do it. It's never too late to make a positive difference to your situation. Just determine. Be intentional from now on. So whatever life stage you're in, let's all agree, shall we, to be more intentional. Perfection, when it comes to this, is just a myth, but we can all do better. I don't know about you, 
I'm extremely glad that I'm not alone in the journey. I'm very glad that you're with me for the ride as we all try to be more intentional about our finances together. So there you have it. Seven golden rules of personal finance and to some extent for life generally. Cash flow is everything. Protect your income. Understand risk. Seek opportunity. It's everywhere. Don't throw money away. Behave your way to success and be intentional. And that kind of brings to an end 18 months worth of content here on Meaningful Money. So you won't be surprised uh, to know that I got some pretty big plans for what's coming up in the near future. We're going to have a, a few obligatory in between episodes, interview shows to give me a bit of a breather. Um, I'm always really keen to know what you would like to learn about. So get in touch via the website or the, me the Meaningful Money Facebook group, which is meaningfulmoney.tv slash community, just to let me know. The plan is to keep uh, the podcast here, the Wednesday show, very big picture, dealing with big subjects in depth. Then we've got the YouTube channel. Uh, that is growing quickly, uh, but I want to deal more with perhaps sort of granular, maybe single issue subjects there, things which perhaps lend themselves to graphics on a screen, okay? I also want to do more vlogs. So if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, head over there and do that now, youtube.com slash Meaningful Money. Um, but big plans, more and bigger, uh, all within, you know, what I'm able to do as um, really just me and uh, I've got a couple of uh, amazing people in my team. There are always going to be limits as to exactly what uh, we're able to do. But, um, you know, lots of big plans are still to come. Uh, Meaningful Academy, here's an update for you. Uh, I wanted to um, sort of celebrate the close of this chapter of the podcast by rounding things up here and offering a discount for those of you listening to this uh, that you're thinking about joining Meaningful Academy. Meaningful Academy is like my best thinking about how to improve your financial situation in one place. It's going to be three phases, financial foundations, build wealth, and retirement planning. The first two of those are full, fully available and uh, open now. So you can dive into those as soon as you're ready. You learn at your own pace. Phase three, which is retirement planning, uh, is on its way, uh, shall we say. But this code, this coupon code that I'm going to uh, announce in just a second will be permanent, okay? I'll be trailing it every week. But this podcast, and more specifically you, the listeners, you have been the ones that have made all the difference to me in my career and in everything that I want to do here, both you know, in the past and particularly in the future. So I think it really makes sense to kind of reward you and thank you for uh, your support to give you a permanent discount uh, to Meaningful Academy. So the discount will be £25 off the price of financial foundations, the first phase, £75 off the build wealth phase, um, and then be also off the bundle of the two options because you can buy the two together. I think the discount comes to about 83 quid. These amounts are give or take a few pence, okay, because the system works on percentages, right? So near as damn it, 25 quid off, 75 quid off, and 83 pounds off if you buy both financial foundations and uh, build wealth together. So the coupon code you need when you register is simply PODCAST, right? All caps, ideally, but it shouldn't really matter, but PODCAST. Enter that in the box on registration and the Academy site will automatically apply the discount for you. So again, for those of you that are on tenterhooks for phase three of the Academy Retirement Planning, I do appreciate your patience. My recent health issues have put back the timeline on that a little bit. Still working on it where I can. I've got the energy to do it. I don't yet have an ETA for you. I'm so sorry, but you can still register your interest. Just click through from the homepage of Meaningful Academy uh, just to say that you're interested in phase three. Everything you need to know and do is at MeaningfulAcademy.com. Okay, so look forward to seeing you on the inside. If you're on the fence, send me an email. I'll convince you that it's worth it. Okay, next time I'm going to be chatting with my good friend Lynn Beatty, aka Mrs. Mummy Penny, as she launches her new book, The Money Guide to Transform Your Life. I've read it. It's great. We're going to be talking about that this time next week. So that's it for this session, this season, and this epoch of the Meaningful Money podcast. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. Questions and comments at the show notes, meaningfulmoney.tv slash RP12. Nearly at the end of the music. Thank you so much, folks. I'll talk to you next time.